Hi everyone, we are now in lesson 3 and this is all about trademark. Trademark is still under the intellectual property rights. So let's find out what trademark is all about. Alright, so here. There are types of trademarks and then, for example, the shape. There are things that associated actually the trademarks like the shape and then the name. For instance, you have there the product name Coca-Cola and we have here the symbol. I know you're familiar with that. And then the slogan itself and color, also the logo type. So let's talk about this in the following uh, discussions. So basically, those are the different types of trademarks. So here, have you heard about trademark or in the previous slide, have you seen that kind of a particular logo in a different products that you have? So that would comprise the trademark. So there are five categories of trademarks. We have here fanciful, arbitrary, suggestive, descriptive, and generic. So let's talk about this. Um, five categories um, in the next slides. So let's first define what is a trademark. So a trademark is a distinctive sign that identifies certain goods or services produced or provided by an individual or a company. Its origin dates back to ancient times when craftsmen reproduced their signatures or marks on their artistic works or products of a functional or practical nature okay, to make it as their own. Or that would also mean um, their identity of their creation. Over the years, these marks have evolved into, into today's system of trademark registration and protection. The system helps consumers to identify and purchase a product or service based on whether its specific characteristics and quality as indicated by its unique trademark, which also meet our needs. And then what to do, um, what do trademarks do? Trademark protection ensures that owners of marks have exclusive right to use them to identify goods or services or to authorize others to use them in return for payment. The trademark only allows the owner to copy, produce, profit from, and use the mark. A trademark holder can take legal action against someone who infringes on trademark in federal court. So these are the things, okay, the term um, we need to bear in mind. So the first one is generic mark. Actually, does not qualify for trademark unless uh, includes more specific detail. One example of a generic mark is the phrase, the ice cream shop. Offering trademark protection on something this generic would restrict all other shops that sell ice cream products. So in order to qualify a generic mark for a trademark, it needs to describe qualities, characteristics, or ingredients of the good your business sells. Then we have descriptive mark. It identifies one or more characteristics of a product or service and it only serves to describe the product. It has unique elements that qualify it for protection under trademark laws such as it must have secondary meaning such as amount and manner of advertising, volume of sales, length and manner of marks use or results of consumer surveys to qualify. So that is a descriptive mark. 
This means that consumers must recognize the mark and identify it with the brand. Okay, so to qualify as a descriptive mark, it should evolve from what the brand represents to who the brand represents as well. Then we have suggestive. Okay, suggestive implies something about the good or service. A mark is in this category typically qualifies for protection without requiring a secondary meaning. So the term suggestive means that the consumer must use the imagination to figure out what services or goods the company offers. One example is the luxury automotive brand Jaguar. Are you familiar with that? It suggests speed and agility, but does not immediately convey a car manufacturer. So that is an example of suggestive. Then let's have fanciful. Is a term, name, or logo that is different from anything else that exists. This category is the easiest for obtaining trademark protection because it typically does not compete with anything else or become too generic. Examples of fanciful marks include product, uh, Nike and Adidas. These words don't hold any meaning in common language, right? So trademarking them doesn't infringe on the rights of the other companies that offer similar products. Then we have arbitrary mark. Uh, might include a term or phrase with a well-known meaning, but the meaning in its case is different. The best example of arbitrary mark is Apple, the brand Apple, the computer and electronics manufacturer. An Apple is a familiar term, but in this case, the mark does not have anything to do with the general meaning of the term. So for companies that offer services, they can use service mark. It is the same as trademark, but it distinguishes a company that provides services instead of products. A service mark still falls under the legal trademark laws and must be registered with the USPTO. A common example of a service mark would be the McDonald's service mark since it is used to represent the services provided. So that is an example. An additional form of legal protection for distinguishing businesses is trade dress which includes identifying features of a product or a company such as packaging elements, take for items, and other similar concepts. Product features don't usually fall under the type of trademark for legal protection, but instead under trade dress protection. So that's the term. If a consumer identifies a specific feature or features, with a brand or company instead of the actual product. The case of trade dress protection is strong. One example of trade dress is the battle of Lyserit, mouthwash. You're familiar with that. The unique flat shape of the battle is easily identifiable to consumers looking for Lyserit. So it qualified for protection which restricts others from producing a confusingly similar battle design. Okay. So there are examples of trademarks here. So yeah, there's Starbucks coffee, um, other brand, Puma, almost every brand logo you can think of has a trademark, right? And there is the sign R, registered. The categories of trademarks designate how unique the mark is and how much protection it offers in legal situations. Other trademark types include certification marks, collective membership marks, and collective trademarks. Certification marks identify which authority provides certification of goods, while collective membership marks are for members of an organization, collective, or association. This type of trademark shows the membership of each person and distinguishes 
the services or products from those who don't belong to the group. Collective trademarks offer protection for a group of people who own the symbol, logo, design, phrase, or word together. So those are the things that you need to know if you want to apply for a trademark. I believe in the previous lessons that we have, uh, when you submitted to me the modules that you had, actually, you have a very nice um, creation of your own logo and product design. So you'll never know. You might as well end up um, thinking of uh, improving your output and then apply in the trademark soon. So why are types of trademarks important? When applying for trademark protection, it's important to understand the differences between each type. If your phrase, word, symbol, or logo is too generic, it will be difficult to qualify for legal protection, right? So if you specify and then follow those, um, the categories that I mentioned a while ago. It may be worthwhile to consider modifying your mark so that it more, um, it is more easily uh, qualifies. A trademark allows consumers to easily identify the source of goods or services so that there is trademark distinctiveness. Before trademark laws became more regulated, there was confusion in the marketplace. Consumers couldn't immediately recognize the provider of services or goods, so it was difficult to achieve brand loyalty. So that's it. The Lanham Act, signed into law in 1945, helped offer more protection under the trademarks issued in the United States. When a business or individual receives approval on a trademark application, it becomes with legal rights and protections. Infringement occurs when someone else uses a similar mark that will cause confusion. If neither party holds a trademark on the mark, it is difficult to prove who used it first, right? So that would cause problem or an argument. Thus, business owners should file an application for a trademark as soon as possible to prevent losing the opportunity to do so. Okay, so you might end up, perhaps you will be, what is that, um, outsmarted by somebody else. The period of protection varies, but the trademark can be renewed indefinitely upon payment of the corresponding fees. Trademark protection is legally enforced by the courts that, in most systems, have the authority to stop trademark infringement. So you are actually protected by law. What kinds of trademarks can be registered? Trademarks may be one or a combination of words, letters, and numerals. They may be consist of drawings, symbols, or three-dimensional signs, such as the shape and packaging of goods. Now, if you only read the module that you have, that I gave you, you will understand and then figure out the one that you design. Okay? In some countries, non-traditional marks may be registered for distinguishing features such as holograms, motion, color, and non-visible signs like the sound, the smell, or the taste. So do you know the symbols of trademark? Anytime you claim rights is a mark or in a mark, you may use the TN, trademark, or SN, service mark, designation to alert the public to your claim, regardless of whether you have filed an application with the USPTO. Now I noticed there are some of you who made your brand logo or design. Um, some of you have copied no? Uh, the original brand logo or symbol from the original brand or products. So I hope with this topic, you learn the importance of having a trademark and you value, right? So otherwise, you will be in court uh, with violating such kind of law.
So if you happen to see a certain brand or logo with the word TM, so that means um, that particular product is under trademark. So do not copy. So that's why I encourage you to make your own and create on your own. Okay. So, however, you may use the federal registration symbol, the R, right? So, you're also familiar with that. So, at home, try to uh, figure out some items that you have. Shirts, clothes, something like that. Um, items, then try to figure out if there are um, logo, no, na na, there is R. Okay. So, you can still use like that. Only after the USPTO actually registers a mark and not while an application is or in pending. Okay. Also, you may use the registration symbol with a mark only on or in connection with the goods or services listed in the federal trademark registration. So they are very keen. A trademark is any visible sign used by an enterprise to distinguish or differentiate its products and services from those of another. There are two types of marks. So, according to composition and according to strength. Trademark according to composition is a combination of word or symbol or design. Okay? There, most of you have actually submitted uh, mostly symbol or design. So, you can still actually create a word so for example like this so combination of word symbol and design then symbol or design then like this and word mark like toyota okay. so you have there the symbol like to check so you can actually identify um, what is that um, symbol or logo all about phrase or slogan or tagline like this okay so you have there the symbol letter m that's for mcdonald's and then beside the m you have there the r circle the r so it means registered plus the word tm after the slogan i'm loving it okay so see it and it is really protected then three-dimensional figure like the lg okay so you have there that symbol there's the dot and there is the L and then the G sign. Okay? So, three-dimensional figure. Stamped container like this. Okay, the brand actually is in the container, right? So, I believe you have also encountered this. Trademark according to strength. So, protectable, then non-protectable. For a while. So let us remember almost all countries in the world register and protect trademarks. Each national or regional office maintains a register of trademarks containing full application information on all registrations and renewals, which facilitates examination, search, and potential opposition by the third parties so it's not that easy the effects of the registration are however limited to the country or in the case of regional registration or countries concerned so how is trademark registered first an application for registration of a trademark must be filed with the appropriate national or regional trademark office the application must contain a clear reproduction of the sign filed for registration, including any colors, forms, or three-dimensional features. It must also contain a list of goods or services to which the sign would apply. The sign must fulfill certain conditions in order to be protected as trademark or type of mark. And it must be distinctive so that consumers can distinguish it from trademarks identifying other products as well as identifying a particular product with it. It must neither mislead or deceive consumers nor violate public order or morality. So take note of that. Finally, the rights applied 
or cannot be the same as or similar to rights already granted to another trademark owner. This may be determined through search and examination by national offices, so it will be undergo a lot of processes, or by the opposition of third parties who claim to have similar or identical rights. Okay, so it is something to do to be something to do with our creativity. So what is the scope of protection? Exclusive right, but rest or loss of protection if no declaration of actual use within three years from filing. Found to be invalid, and that would be found to be invalid. So what is the term for protection? Uh, potentially perpetual, then it also it is also renewal every 10 years. Choosing a mark that is unique and descriptive of your products or services will offer the best legal protection. Generic marks rarely qualify for trademarks, so make it stand out before submitting your trademark application. So see, I know you are creative, so you can actually do that one. When you understand the types of trademarks class, you can make sure to file for one that will get approval and generate awareness about your brand. Right? So here, I also included here references where I got all the things that I shared to you and then additional readings for references. For a while, I'll maybe, I maybe missed some um, item here, this one. So that protectable and non-protectable, although this is found in your um, or study guide in your module. So, um, so here, the coin fanciful, like the Kodak brand, arbitrary, the Apple, then other term. So take a look at that one in your module. So thank you very much for your participation. Thank you.